favor of no, so we could please nominate him. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be back here in southern Minnesota and to have a chance to renew some old acquaintances for sure. Uh, many of you probably remember some of you older folks. I've, I've been a long time gone congressman. I represented this district, the second congressional district, which included uh, Mankato and Blue Earth County. I see some very good old friends, Mary Myers in the crowd, Millie and El Gunning, who have been here for many years, but always supporting good conservative fiscal policies and social policies for the, uh, for the government. Um, one thing I want to mention that um, Mary brought a book, and I couldn't think of a more appropriate passage when I read it. Bill Simon was Secretary of Treasury under President Ford when I was in Congress in 1975. He directed the OMB. He was one of the finest people to ever serve. He was the first uh, director of the Department of Energy and uh, a great patriot, very successful businessman. And he wrote a book, and Mary brought this book, and if there's anything that fits what's going on today, his comments are so appropriate, I think, just to start this little rally off with a, a quote out of him, and it goes like this. Stop asking the government for free goods and services, however desirable and necessary they may seem to be. They are not free. They are simply extracted from the hide of your neighbors and can be extracted only by force. If you would not confront your neighbor and demand his money at the point of a gun to solve every new problem that may appear in your life, be prepared to identify any politician who simultaneously demands your sacrifices and offers you free services. For exactly he is an egalitarian demagogue. This one insight understood, this one discipline acted upon and taught by millions of Americans to others could do more to further freedom in the American life than any other. And what can you say more true today? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Many of, many of you may have seen a recent poll if you have uh, AOL as your internet browser, there was a poll yesterday that showed that approximately 47% of the American people pay no taxes into our system to support all that America offers them. Not a nickel. And uh, obviously the other 53% are paying the rest. And then they took a survey and asked people whether they thought they were sufficiently taxed or insufficiently. Coincidentally, only 45% thought they were undertaxed. 47% thought they were overtaxed. And how do those numbers fit? Isn't that something? Everybody that doesn't pay anything thinks it's right, and everybody that seems to be paying taxes think they're overtaxed in America. And uh, believe me, uh, I'm with that 47% that thinks we're all overtaxed. It's a, it's, a, it's a great day here in Minnesota. Andy mentioned I used to be referred to as Dr. No from Minnesota back in the 70s. I voted against a lot of spending when even Republican presidents like Gerald Ford proposed it when we had a recession. And I've always said that you can't spend your way out of, out of a uh, recession and you can't spend what you don't collect and indebit your future generations to pay your bills. And this is what's been going on since I left Congress and went on while I was there. When I was there, the deficit for America was about $500 million billion. Today we're approaching soon $15 trillion. Those are on budget items that are identified. They project by the year 2020 it will be over $20 trillion. And a lot of it is coming from our adversaries and our strong uh, economic opponents like China, Middle Eastern countries that 
take our dollars and and uh, bring uh, back to sell us their high-priced oil, and we are just gradually undermining our society. We don't have a good energy policy in this country because, unfortunately, our opponents, Republican opponents in Congress for years have fought every kind of issue to produce nuclear power, to produce and explore for our domestic resources, to harness our coal, our oil shale, whatever it is, it's no. Like my son says, may it almost, as the Russians might say. But the um, thing is, if we get this country on its feet, we've got to elect people that are willing to support and use our domestic resources and to stop the transfer of wealth out of America and start putting it into America with good jobs. Yeah. Now, as you all know, there's a congressional election coming up. My son Jim is a candidate for this congressional seat in the 1st District. He asked me to read a couple of comments that I would like to uh, tell you. Uh, he is here. He is planning on running and defeating Tim Walsh. And I'm not here just seeking your support on Jim's behalf. I'm here to tell you that Jim is endorsing you and your cause. Jim Hagedorn endorses, respects, and admires the work that the people and the Tea Party have done all across America. And what you've accomplished in the space of just one short year, the aluminification that you put on the problems and what the Congress is doing has been magnificent and significant. You've instilled a much needed dose of fiscal discipline on a Republican Party that had run amok for too long. You've sent a clear message to politicians of both parties, enough is enough, enough with the spending, enough with higher taxes, and enough with political doublespeak. Your grassroots movement and passion for the issue speaks for itself. You don't need community organizers to help lead your efforts. You do it yourself with your strong conviction, your issues. The homemakers, the businessmen, the school teachers that have stepped up on the front lines and said this has got to stop. We've got to take America back. Jim is Jim has spoke out aggressively about Washington politicians frivolously supporting pork barrel spending, earmarks, and yes, even sometimes outright corruption. And he did it through his blog, Mr. Conservative U.S. He told it like it was even when it was members of the Republican Party that were doing the spending and were increasing the debt. Jim took the heat, lots of it, right from his friends and acquaintances on Capitol Hill where he's worked for 25 years. But he never wavered. And after the Tea Party movement was underway, Jim rallied with Tea Party members in Washington. He and I stood alongside John Voigt last November when the Obamacare rally, Stop Obamacare, I should say, was in Washington. And if you elect him to Congress, he'll be a proud Tea Party patriot, speaking out this last spending, reduce taxes, and repeal and replace Obamacare. Thank you. Most of all, he will passionately defend liberty and freedom and individual responsibility, free markets, and the ability to succeed or fail on your own merits, and most importantly, to defend the Constitution of the United States, because that is ultimately why we're all here. Thank you very much for your support and the opportunity to have a few minutes with you. Have a good day. Great rally. Thank you, Mr. Hagedorn. Another good American. I was just going to mention we had a few people go by and exercise their right to free speech also. Their comment, as I heard it, was that they ought to, we ought to tax the rich. Now, I'm not trying to stand up for the rich, but if you go do your home...